what's up guys? I've got a nice and easy tutorial for you here. Perfect for any beginners who are just getting started with Blender, VJing or just 3D in general. We're going to be tackling the simple sci-fi tunnel animation. If you do make it to the end, feel free to tag me in your renders on Instagram where I'm most active. I'll be leaving my handle right down here. And if you're lazy like me, I've also provided the project file on my website where you can buy for only one great British pound. Or if you're feeling generous, you can support me on Patreon where you'll be able to access all of my tutorial project files along with other exclusive benefits. Right, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. Alright, once you've got Blender open, first thing I'm going to do is delete this default cube. So click on the cube, hit X and delete. We're going to hit Shift A, add a mesh and we'll add a cylinder. Now come over here to this menu and expand that, we're going to drop the vertices down to 6 so it's going to be a hexagonal cylinder to give it that hexagon shape and I want you to hit tab which takes you into edit mode and we're going to go to face select here and we're just going to delete these faces so click on that face, hit X, delete faces same again on the bottom, hit X, delete faces now come out of edit mode and I want you to hit RX90 to rotate it 90 degrees along the x-axis, that way the tunnel's facing down the y-axis. Now hit SY8 and that's just going to stretch out your tunnel along the y-axis. With that done we're going to go back into edit mode so hit tab A so you select all the faces and we're just going to go to loop cut here and I want you to change the number of cuts to 6 and just click directly in the middle of your object and that's going to give you six loop cuts along the tunnel. Go back to your box select just so you don't end up making loop cuts by accident. Out, and we're going to come out of edit mode, hit tab again. Right, so with this cylinder selected, we're going to go to the modifier settings here, this little spanner, and I want you to add a modifier, and we're going to add a wireframe modifier which is just there. And as you can see what that does is it basically it basically deletes the faces of the object and adds mesh over the edges of the object so you can see where we made those loop cuts it's added all these little hex guns along but you'll notice the wireframe is sort of uneven and the reason why that is is because we haven't applied our transform settings so what I want you to do is hit Control A with your object selected and just apply all transforms and that should fix that click on your cylinder and we're going to duplicate this so hit Shift D and we're just going to rename these two. We're going to call the first one Hex Reflect and the second one we're going to call Hex Wire. Now select your Hex Reflect and I want you to go back to the spanner and we're just going to delete the wireframe modifier because we're going to use this object to sort of control the reflections of the scene uh, which I'll show you in a bit once we start shading it. But in order for those reflections to pop up we just need to do some scaling on this. So with your hex reflect selected, we're going to scale the X to 1.4 and we're going to scale the Z to 1.4. So just so it sort of surrounds the object. If you didn't apply your object before, then your scaling axes might not work. So just make sure again you've applied you've applied the transform settings with control A. Great, with that set up, let's quickly animate the camera. So select your camera, hit Alt G and then Alt R. That resets the location and the rotation. Now just hit RX90. So we face the camera along the y-axis and we're going to hit GY-8 and that's just going to bring the camera directly to the edge of the tunnel. As you can see, this little orange dot, which is the camera's origin point, it aligns perfectly on the end of the tunnel. Now drag up your timeline. I'm going to make this a 30 frames per second animation and Blender defaults its frame rate to 24. You can leave it as that if you want, but uh, I'm going to up it to 30. I'm going to change the end frame to 150. Go back to my camera, come to the transform settings here. We're going to apply a keyframe on the Y axis of the location, and we're going to make sure that's on the first frame of the scene. So come here, apply that keyframe, and now with your mouse inside the timeline, I want you to hold shift and hit the right arrow and then hit the right arrow again without holding shift that time to set the playhead to 151 and we're going to go again to the y-axis and we're going to set this to 8 which as you can see aligns perfectly at the end of the tunnel which is going to create that seamless loop so apply that keyframe on frame 151 the reason why we set it to 151 is because if you don't 
you end up getting a duplicate frame when you render out the animation, which is going to create an issue if you want it to loop seamlessly. It's basically going to cause a stutter effect. Um, the reason is because you're basically rendering the same frame twice, um, so it seems like it's staying on that frame for a little bit longer. Make sure your last keyframe is set um, one after the end of your timeline. So with those keyframes applied, hover our mouse in the timeline again and hit A and then T and we're going to set the interpolation to linear and what that does is it makes sure that the camera animates um, in a linear fashion which basically means it constantly keeps passing through. If you have it set to Bezier which is what Blender defaults as, um, you'll find it starts to accelerate into the animation and then slow down as it comes to an end. As we want the animation to loop and pass through the tunnel seamlessly, uh, you want to make sure that's set to linear. So with that done, only thing left to do now with the tunnel is just extend it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select my hex reflect and I'm going to select my hex wire. So hold shift, click on each one and I want you to hit M on the keyboard and we're going to move it to a new collection and we're going to call this tunnel. And now that we've moved that to a collection, we can start to instance the collection. So I'm going to hit Shift A on my keyboard, add a collection instance, and we're going to add our tunnel. And now all you've got to do is hit GY16, so the start of the tunnel perfectly aligns with the end of the previous one. And then I want you to hit Shift D, Y16, which will duplicate that and do the same. And then just hit Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, Shift R, keep hitting Shift R, which just repeats the last function that you made in Blender. And now if you hit zero, it takes you into camera mode. Let's take off these overlays so we can get an accurate representation of the scene. Um, get rid of that and we'll hit play. And there you go. Great. So that's our that's pretty much our scene done there. Um, now we just got to start shading it and bring it to life. Um, but first, let's move all of these into their own collection so that we can keep our scene a bit more organized. So I'm going to hit M, new collection, inst. Just for the beginners there, the reason why we instance this instead of duplicating it is because number one, it's much easier on your computer's resources. Basically these instances, they don't actually contain mesh data. They're more of a sort of ghost copy of the original um, two things that you've put in the collection. Uh, so when you're working with bigger scenes, it's better to instance um, objects rather than duplicate them. Just saves your computer a bit of stress. And also, one handy thing I find as well, any edits that you make to the master object, for example, if I start stretching out this face, it's going to apply it to all of the instances, uh, saving you trouble of uh, deleting everything and then duplicating it again. So with that out of the way, let's jump into rendered modes. But first, I want you to save the work that you've done so far just in case your project crashes. Great, so now that you've saved that, we're gonna jump into render mode. So hit Z and then an eight. Now the first thing I wanna do is change the world settings to black. So click on your world settings here. On your color here, just drop that all the way down to black. Now if you hit zero, that'll take you into camera mode so you can see through your tunnel. And as you can see, we can barely see through the tunnel and that's cause there's no lighting in there. You can see the lights sort of poking through. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on that light that comes with the scene and we're going to hit Alt-G, which is going to reset the location. Or alternatively, if you've deleted your light, you can just add a new one with Shift-A, add light, add a point light. But we're just going to use the one in the scene that we've already got. I'm going to drop the wattage down to about 400 and let's bring it along the y-axis, maybe around here. Let's make the light a nice sort of cool blue, I think. So that's the light there. One thing you'll notice, once we hit play, it's not gonna, it looks cool, but it's not going to loop properly because when you get to the end of the tunnel, it's going to go black and then you're going to go back to the light. So how do we fix this? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to select our light and we're going to parent it to the camera. And what parenting basically means is you're essentially connecting one object to another. So when I parent the light to the camera, any movement to the camera that I key in, the light is going to follow that. So click on your light and then click on your camera holding control and I want you to hit control P and you're going to select set parent to object keep transform and as you can see when we hit play the light it follows the camera see 
You can see that little point light is just following it. So with that out of the way, now here's what we're going to do to bring the scene to life. We're going to select our hex reflect and we're going to go to our scene settings here. We're going to be using Eevee for this by the way, so make sure you set your render engine to Eevee. Now we're going to hit ambient occlusion, we're going to hit bloom and then we're going to hit screen space reflections. That's the magic button there. That's going to do most of the work for you. And then we're going to hit motion blur. Now we've enabled those screen space reflections, but we're not actually getting any reflections coming from this uh, object yet. And that's because we haven't assigned the material settings. This is basically just adding functionality to your render engine. Um, you still need to set up the materials to enable those reflections. With your hex reflect selected, we're going to go to the material settings here. And I just want you to add a new material and we're going to pump the metallic all the way up. Let's drop the specular down a bit, let's say to about 0.12 and let's drop the roughness down to about 0.13 and now you can start to see those reflections come through. You can make it fully reflective if you want by dropping the roughness to zero. I think that's a bit too much in my opinion so I like to just tame it out a bit with the 0.12. Now let's just simply make this material a different color to white and I'm just going to bring my light forward a bit up to minus six I think and let's pull the camera out a bit as well maybe to like 30 millimeters and the light let's let's change the color a bit let's bring the blue light in a bit so we can get that red to come through maybe we'll bring the camera out a little bit more I think that looks good just going to bring the light a bit more out minus six I think I just noticed it was cutting off on those wireframes there. One more thing to make it pop a bit more, we're going to go to our render engine and we're going to go to color management and we're going to set the look to very high contrast. Let's pump the exposure up by one and drop the gamma to about 0.9 I think. And I might just bring the camera out a touch further, maybe to 23 millimeters. I'll bring the camera out to 20. The wider the camera angle, the faster it appears that the tunnel's moving. Uh, just so you know. You don't have to copy it to the T, but I just think this looks good. And that's pretty much it guys. Really quick and easy tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. I'm just going to quickly show you how to render out the animation. So you want to come to the output properties here. You want to set your output to somewhere you can find it. I've got a little Blender tutorial folder set up for myself, but you don't really want it in the TMP folder um, just in case you struggle to find it. Uh, so yeah, save it somewhere you can find it and you want to change the file format to FFmpeg video assuming you want it to play as a video. Uh, you can export it as a PNG sequence if you want but this is just easier. So yeah, FFmpeg video, change the encoding to MP4. Video codec, leave that as H.264. Output quality, perceptually lossless. All you got to do is come to render and render animation and you're done. Alright guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please leave a like and subscribe if you found value in this. You can also support me on Patreon where you can access all the project files for my tutorials. And if you upgrade to a nebhead, you also get access to all the project files for my weekly renders, which you can see on my Instagram page. Lots of stuff on there for you guys to play around with. If you do want to support me through there, that's great. If not, I understand. If you don't feel comfortable with Patreon for whatever reason, you can also purchase project files directly from my website. I'll be leaving a link to that in the description. You can also explore more of my artwork, um, my music, and also download project files for the for my weekly renders from my website. And you can find that all at nebmotion.co.uk.